Ladies and gents, welcome to the reaction. And this is Earth Defense Force Six review. Monoxide poisoning trademark. Watch how it's in tag. Okay, first of all, what is happening? He just posted a video a few days ago. Even when it comes to scheduling, Sad doesn't care. This is. Can this channel get any better, right? The video just he, what he just posted about the league, right? It says 4K and it's just like somehow that that video was a 4K video by the way, and it's like pixelated as fuck. What was the bit data rate of that? It's like few hundred, uh, you know, mega kilobytes or something. No, mega, few hundred kilobytes or something. 500 KB. That's that's the data rate of that shit. 4K. That was just awesome. And now he's putting Earth Defense Force video. I remember watching Earth Defense Force four, four or something like that. Yeah, four. From uh, you know, uh, what's the channel? I fucking forgot the name. Russian Badger. Yeah, Russian Badger. Yeah, from that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was the channel. Yeah, it was the one. So I remember getting blown away by the mechanics and like how crazy shit was happening with the explosion and everything. Too many things were happening. Like how how was the engine, uh, you know, handling that? And then Seth made a video about like Earth Defense Force Five, I guess a few months ago, a year ago, I don't know something like that. And now the six, this one 2022 as YouTube tells me. So I'm gonna assume this game's gonna be really good, right? If 4 was that good, 5 was good as well. So 6 must be with the modern tech and things. And thinking the game must be famous. If like Russian Bezos Seth is making multiple videos like that. Or at least now it's famous because they made multiple videos of like that. So they must have put a lot of money into making some good mechanics and shit. So this is gonna be interesting. Alright, let's this one. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. I did my part. We all did our part. But it wasn't enough. It's been three years since we killed God, and we're still no closer to reclaiming our world. The aliens may be gone, but the monsters they've left behind have made life all but impossible. The world is ruled by monsters. At this point, maybe we are the invaders, and they are the EDF now. Wait, what? 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 The Earth Defense Force 6 begins now. This game has finally been released outside of the theocratic dictatorship known as Japan, where the personal computer is a heretical relic and releasing a good PC port is considered apostasy. Luckily, the developers aren't getting excommunicated, as this game, which is about 80% EDF5 by volume, somehow has a worse PC port. And despite not being an Epic exclusive, this game uses Epic online services for its multiplayer. Ah yes, let me just sign in with my LEGO account. You can't turn this off, and every time you get an achievement, it locks your controls and you die. We are so back. Back to the past, because that's where we're going. Now, you'd think the phrase EDF plus time travel would be a good tone indicator for this experience, but you'd be wrong. Watching this game unfold is like giving a 20 to your local tweaker. After the gas station dick pills and two hits of bang energy kick in, it's impossible to predict his next move. And yet, it's strangely captivating to watch him wrestle an officer while urinating with a full erection. Speaking of which, our sponsor, I need money for Phantom. Okay, ah, so this game isn't good, or at least port isn't good. I don't know, I had really, as soon as I saw the title, I had really high hopes. Knowing how awesome the previous ones was, right? Four and five. I don't know. Five was good. I don't know. Four was definitely good. I don't know that. And this game is like has real promise uh, just by the how gameplay works, the mechanics and everything. Knowing like how four was, how old that is. Like back then the game was like that. Yeah. I don't know. Hey gang, do you want to know why we're dealing with this invasion? Because someone, you specifically, forgot to install ExpressVPN. That's right, Earth Defense Force is a metaphor for what happens when you browse the net without a VPN. Like ants to a picnic, your unsecured connection attracts all manner of unsavory characters. From your ISP to scummy data brokers and government glowies. Who knows what they want or what they'll do when they get it. If you're lucky, they'll just sell off your data to the highest bidder and turn your life into a living hell of targeted advertising. If you're unlucky, they'll establish a detailed record of every illicit detail of your personal life and use it against you to ruin your life. That's right, you'll be forced to resort to making TikTok slop content just to get by. Thankfully, ExpressVPN stops all this and more by routing all of your internet traffic through a secure encrypted tunnel, allowing you to browse the internet anonymously, securely, and privately. Use it to stay safe anywhere, even on unsecured public Wi-Fi. Ugh, now that's what 
Okay, that hackful thing, right? I'm pretty sure there was a video I saw on your uh, <laughs> homepage that she has a podcast now, which is like, I think, you know, just like, this is whole other level of uh, like uh, internet trolling slash meme shit. Because she be- became such a big meme, and just based on that, she was becoming popular. People were like, fuck it, let's make this funny, and making her even more popular. So like podcasts and shit, everything is working even more. What I call a picnic. Personally, I use ExpressVPN to protect myself from my own landlord. At the moment, I have him fooled. He thinks I can barely make rent, but as the owner of my Wi-Fi network, he can see everything I do. If he sees what I purchase online, he'll jack up my rent. But with ExpressVPN, Wi-Fi owners can't see what you're up to on their network, making total privacy just one click away. Now, I can go about my normal business and occasionally turn it off to Google things like what to do if very poor, how to make money for rent, and is it healthy to eat cement? Just to throw him off a trail. ExpressVPN oh, is consistently man. rated the number one- Why did he just turn that into depressing mode? Ah, oh. People actually like uh, asking basic questions. Some of that hurts more, right? Like, like I, I, I get it. People might have money issues, but at least they know what to do, not to do. People are actually writing down like, okay, what to do, how to like, what to do to make rent and shit like oh that just hurts i don't know why one vpn by CNET, the verge and tons of other tech reviewers and unlike me they actually have a reputation find out how you can get free months of express vpn for free by scanning the qr code on screen clicking the link in the description box below or by going to expressvpn.com forward slash seth Earth Defense Force 6 innovates on the EDF format of reusing 90% of the last game by having you time travel back to literal copy-pasted EDF 5 missions. Those the entire intro is a highlight reel of brain rot from a previous title. In these five months, humanity has lost 30% of its population. 30%. That's still not too bad. And since my mind hey, has blocked right. out all EDF-related memories as a trauma... 30% is a large number, I get it, but it's just like alien invasion is like chaotic level shit. It's like if Fallout happened and Fallout is only 30% died, it's like, yeah, it's just like you expect 99%, so at least that's good. This fills that level of shit, like only 30% at least, that's good. For response, it still hits just as hard. From a premise, you'd think we'd bring back some kind of super weapon or strategy. But remember, this is a universe where everyone eats glue, including the aliens. What we've brought back is far more valuable. Advice. Advice, such as shoot the glowing weak point. In the original timeline, this took the EDF months to figure out. Your guidance helps a little, but the aliens are sending new enemies back in time as well. We're playing a game game of quantum chess, but every player is retarded. So, what's new? Not much. Welcome to EDF. You get one new mechanic and quality of life features which should have been there from the start, like these new damage numbers. So now, I can see I'm doing exactly one damage. The Ranger can now turn while sprinting. This took years of programming. Everyone gets a new backpack weapon slot, so now you can actually use all the stupid shit that would have otherwise cost you an entire slot. Backpack weapons also reload passively, so now you don't have to hold it out for a real life minute to reload your turrets. This entire series is built on breaking you down, to the point where I'm giving praise each time something gets marginally better. Wing Diver gets an infinite durability, spammable shield that blocks everything. Its intended purpose is to- I mean, that, that's clever in itself, like, how would you appreciate something unless they make it worse for you first? And they're like, oh look at this, this is really good. It's basically Apple approach, isn't it? Oh look at this, they finally switched to USB-C. Yeah, okay, I guess. Cheaper than shit phones had USB-C for like multiple years now. To survive attacks and get some breathing room. Its actual purpose is to grief your teammates. Playing Air Raider causes a unique form of brain damage, where all of your dopamine pathways remap to prioritize Big Bomb at the cost of self-preservation. EDF-5 tried to fix this by adding more limpet guns in a third weapon slot. EDF-6 has given up completely. Now you have an entirely new category of drone strikes, which can work underground or in a timeline where all of your artillery crews are dead. An offenser gets literally nothing. He's exactly the same. Just like Five, he goes from broke to broken, from garbage can to Gundam that can solo the entire game. EDF's enemy designs take from the late Confucian philosophy of CBT maximalism, which falls into one of the following categories. Instant death shotgun, instantaneous corporeal relocation, I can't see what the fuck is going on, I'm having an epileptic seizure, and the rarest category of all, actually good. If they have a gimmick, EDF will make damn sure you know about it. These aliens are armored. They're fully protected. <laughs> Cladding armor, head to toe. 
Recovered in armor. Where do we even need? These enemies have new gear. There are just a few heavily armored aliens. For example, the flying drones have a unique mechanic, the rules of which are... Yeah, this game feels like one of those, like, they're armor, they're triple armor, they're like quadruple armor. Yeah, it just looks like that. Yeah, it makes sense. Right, there you go. Yeah, this game is chaotic as fuck. Like, people with, what is it, photosynthesis, what is it? Uh, basically would get like a, you know, like shock or some shit looking this, right? Ubisoft always like gives that kind of like warning before game starts. I think, you know, EDF should give that warning in like front page or something before somebody tried to buy a game. Because this definitely applies to this one. Described to you in excruciating detail. And what is it? When you shoot an enemy, they get mad. One of the simplest game mechanics that anyone, no matter how much their mother drank during pregnancy, can figure out on their own. In any other game, you would not need to drill this into the player. But this is EDF. I've spent the last 15 hours inhaling nitrous and holding left click. I'm grateful for this reminder. Because with zero explanation, a new red drone shows up. And if you aggro more than one at a time, you're already dead. That's supposed to be a decoy. In EDF 5, they are useless because they had no health. In EDF 6, they're useless because the aliens won't fucking shoot at them. EDF's network of radio gas lighters will keep you stocked up on genuinely dog shit advice. At one point, android suicide bombers show up and you're told to run away, hold your ground, shoot the bombs, don't shoot the bombs, and link up with Charlie. Charlie is the key to all this. A terrifying new enemy. However, are we going to hold shift? Their weakness is the shift key. Surprisingly, most of the new designs aren't terrible. Androids shoot their hands, which is a physical projectile that can be shot out of the air. The new drones have weak spots and dodgeable attacks. The cruel are actually interesting. They can block attacks with their energy shield until it overheats. In the game's own words, the black ones don't work. It's genuinely fun combining different gear and strategies to get past their shields. And then you play a mission with a rolling pillbox and all that praise goes out the window. I need to make one thing very clear. Cheat engine is no longer optional. I complained about the drop system in 5, but now it's worse than I all of the cheat engines in an online game does that even work? isn't that a problem like they'll, you, they'll ban you or some shit I remember using cheat engine in many things <laughs> basically most of the games because fuck it why not right I usually just like do that to like edit like money number like increase money by millions and like do shit I don't know whenever I don't give a fuck or something especially in Borderlands I, I've edited shit in Borderlands so I only get legendary because Borderlands is one of those games, like, I'm not gonna grind for, like, five playthroughs. That shit is not working, right? So I wanna see what legendaries are there to get. And it's just like, I really, wait a minute, the legendaries are really awesome. I wouldn't have known that without cheat engines, so that's great. I could have possibly imagined. Let me give you a quick rundown. Enemies drop armor and weapon crates. Armor crates permanently increase max HP by one. Weapon crates are gacha tokens that give one spin of the end of mission reward wheel. These weapons come from a genuinely schizophrenic loot table based on mission number and difficulty, with a bias towards whatever class you're playing. Getting duplicates levels up the star statistic. This is not a small bonus. It brings the weapon from borderline useless to borderline griefing. If you're operating under a reasonable assumption that difficulty options are are purely a matter of taste, EDF will punish you. If you play the entire game on normal, you'll encounter only 25% of all items. If you want a smooth progression through all of the weapons, playing missions at the- This feels like Borderlands because the same thing applies to Borderlands. It's like percentage area, what type of thing you get is based on percentage. That is true. How many weapons you get in a playthrough, like very few percent. That's also especially with the legendary things, right? Virtually it's like aqua color weapons in Borderlands 3. You don't even get unless you start new game plus, which is like, okay, you want me to play game again? That's okay. There are like kids out there and people with a lot of time who play game, same game again in new game plus, but that's not 90% of the people. So like, come on, man, you know, so that guy kind of pissed me off. Like, I want to see those fucking game. I'm not playing this game again. So yeah, cheat engine works and shit like that. The developer intended armor and weapon levels. You'll have to play the entire game and I'm not making this up, 16 times. Every single mission, on every single class, on normal, hard, hardest, and inferno difficulties. Or you can use Cheat Engine to multiply the drops by several thousand and play on hard so you only miss half a drop table. And if you're worried about Same cheating thing diluting your experience, it won't. Every mission has a hard limit on max health and weapon level. This isn't just a polite suggestion. I'm asking you to cut out 60 hours of grind so you can find out it makes no difference because you get one shot anyway. I mentioned this game was insane, but it doesn't truly become clear until you shoot it to time machine again. You know you're in for a treat when you see the words 
the Earth Defense Force 7 begins now. This is where you realize we're not using time travel to stop ourselves from eating glue. This is a race through time to see who can eat the most glue. Us or the aliens. <laughs> and right now, they're winning because they can send new enemies back in time, but we can only bring our memories back to our bodies in the past. The scientist who travels back with <laughs> this is basically if like if Terminator was real should we go back in time and stop the organization from even becoming or no 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 let's go back in time so we can start our own organization Terminator versus Terminator there you go that's how shit happens like should we should we like stop the production of cocaine no let's double it so we have our own supply as well Review tries to make use of this, but each time he does, the EDF sends him to the psychiatric ward. He's looped so many times, he's memorized the game's dialogue. I mean, I don't actually know how many times he's looped. He just said he lost count, but the EDF's greatest weakness is numbers, so that's not saying much. When he gets locked up, the title of smartest man in the EDF goes to Steve, the only man who can count all the way up to 10. Yeah, and it's number 9, the ninth one out of 10. Truly our brightest mind. Ah, uh, I'd kill for a meal. I'd even need a monster at this point. People smarter than us have already tried. I believe them. Because this is a post No Child Left Behind universe, EDF has a very particular <laughs> way of introducing new people smarter than us has tried. Like, that's, that is an insane statement. Like, okay. <laughs> new enemies. First, you'll do a normal mission with normal dialogue. Then, near the end, the NPCs will randomly bring up something you've never heard before. Like, I would have never believed that demons would rule over the surface three years ago. You're left wondering, is that a metaphor? Then, you go to the next mission and... <laughs> oh shit, they weren't kidding. That cruel is getting prime toppy. This situation is so hopeless that many in the EDF are seeking God. Not in a religious sense, they are physically looking for God. The possibility of his existence gives the EDF... <laughs> This is such a good shit. Going to a church like, where is God? If God is on our heart, in our thought, now shut up! Where is God? I'm on location now. Like everything's going down. Like we need some powerful thing right now. Give me the location right now. Let's let's go. Let's create an expedition for that. There you go. Have hope, not hope that he'll save us, but hope that we can beat him to death ourselves. However, that's not going to work this time, so we <laughs> really need to figure out how to use this whole time travel thing to our advantage. The Earth Defense Force 8 begins now. This time, the scientist managed to avoid the insane asylum and uses his time traveler knowledge to invent newer and better weapons for the EDF. And then though? he gives us the plot twist. The aliens aren't from another planet. They're from Earth, but millions of years into the future. They're not teleporting in monsters that look like giant ants. They're sending the result alien isn't from like outside the earth but they are from the earth from the future so they are not alien they are a creature that evolved from earth making them not alien or did they come on earth in future and now we it's just a time paradox okay this is all confusing of millions of years of ant evolution back in time. These aliens evolved from an Earth where mankind is extinct and the world is ruled by monsters. When they asked, are yeah. we alone in this universe? They discovered the ruins of human civilization and went back in time to check us out. When they descended in their egg-shaped ships, early humans mythologized them as gods. However, one of them said, imagine drunk driving one of these, and did exactly that. After finding the ship, humanity realized, oh shit, there's aliens, and formed the Earth Defense Force. Yeah, that was. <laughs> what if, like, okay, they went back in time? Oh, there were humans. There was somebody before us. Let's check that. Let's let's go back here. Oh, look at their humans. Everybody starts to fire with like 50 calibers. Like, what the fuck? Now we are we are at war. Now there you go. Humans in a nutshell. If the EDF exists, the world will never be ruled by monsters, and the aliens will never evolve. That single drunk driving incident just time paradox the aliens but they have one last option to stop themselves from getting blipped they evolve from a world where humanity is extinct so they just need to make us extinct now you may be thinking why not just go back and turn grug and grunga into paste because that would cause another time paradox if they solve the problem too early then the whole this is why like time traveling feels like probably not gonna happen because every time you think of a paradox it all feels stupid Right? You always have to like make up shit in order to like explain time paradoxes. Right? Like, why don't we just do that? Uh, because, because what? Right? This is why like time paradox is always so weird. Like, manipulating time doesn't feel real that way. Only this future, basically. So this is insane. Like, why not do this? Why not do that? Like, uh, then every like Marvel and shit, they have to like invent some shit right there. Like, that was the like Avengers thing. 
uh, Doctor Strange basically seeing like multiple uh, realities and like only one had the right answer. So nobody basically bitches at the internet, right? They could have done this, they could have done that. No, wait a minute, Doctor Strange already saw that and that didn't work, so shut up. And they never needed to solve a problem and will never solve a problem. That's why they invade at the start of EDF 5. It's just after the formation of the EDF, so there's still a reason to go back and invade. All of this means we have a chance. We just have to do well in one loop and we can time paradox the aliens out of existence for good. This time, we do so well against the aliens that instead of emerging from a bunker into a war zone, you're greeted by an army of advanced soldiers living in a high-tech utopian Wakanda. Then you blow it all up, but despite your efforts, the aliens are still one step ahead. Every loop, they send their evolved ships back into the ring. Turns out, these ships carry a log of everything we did during the war, and they go back in time and use that to retroactively win the war. They've been doing this the entire time, but out of everything in this fucking game, they are being subtle about it. At the start of the game, a ring ship appears. Then, in the next mission, everything is destroyed. They didn't just move quickly, they went back and changed the timeline. We can only go back in time by shooting at the ring at a specific time. But if the aliens time travel before then, they can retroactively change the current timeline from one where we have 10 billion civilians to one where we have 500 civilians because of EDF's time travel rules. Every mission takes place in its own temporal pocket dimension. Any attempts to change the timeline, past or future, will get queued and all the queued actions resolve when the mission ends. If we're in mission 50 and you send me back in time to introduce your father to competitive League of Legends, you can watch me leave and you'll be perfectly fine. Then, on mission 51, you no longer exist because you never existed. Who are you? So, when a mission ends, the evolved yeah, that's, I, I don't like time travel bullshit every time they explain, like, ah, fucking hell, right? Because you can always, like, why not just stop humans from existing or this and that or all that? You can think of many other shit, like, time, whenever you introduce time travel, like, it's just like, oh, man, they, you're just making this deliberately complicated so you don't have to write anything more interesting. Evolved ships going back in time gets resolved, and in the next mission, you're fucked. The scientist couldn't care less, though. He's got bigger issues at the moment. <laughs> There goes my ulcer again. In order to win, we have to do so well in one loop that we can assault the time machine before the evolved ships can go back in time. We're done playing around. It's time to win this thing. The Earth Defense Force 9 begins now. Now, we've gone all the way back to the very beginning of EDF 5. This is the payoff for everything we've had to put up with. From the very start, the EDF has giant mechs called Bragas lying around. Why don't they use them? Because they're construction cranes. The EDF doesn't even think to use them as weapons until months later. But this time, you snuck your weapons through the metal detector, so you can save one guy that dies during the tutorial. Turns out, this was the single most important person in the fucking universe. The linchpin that turns the time of the entire war. This one guy is the only person who knows the code for the Braga elevator. In EDF 5, the base gets wiped and they have to fish out the Bragas from the rubble, but this time they drop the anchor. That is like saying only one guy knows the nuclear launch code. Nobody else does. Like nobody even knows how to touch that. Like, okay, that's that's not how anything works. And you hold the line, punching them to death and saving the base from annihilation. Every mission in this timeline corrects all of your mistakes. These guys got squished by a pylon, but now we can block their convoy so they don't. When the dropships appear in EDF 5, you're not allowed to kill them because nobody has ever tried shooting the glowing weak point. But now, as a civilian, you start blasting them out of the sky and get immediately conscripted. I found a safe place! Behind them! When Godzilla shows up, you waste no time and immediately bring out the Braga to kick his ass. In fact, this timeline goes so well that the EDF has developed their ultimate weapon, Braga with a gun. That would do it. There you go. The aliens are throwing everything they have at us. This is basically, what was that like, Rim, Rim, what was that Rim movie? Pacific Rim? Pacific Rim, right? Basically, you fight monsters with like these robots and things, right? It's time for us to use our own trump card. Another Braga. This is basically the perfect timeline for us, but the aliens still manage to send the evolved ships back. If we want to win, we need our own ace in the hole. Luckily, the scientist has one. The EDF's ultimate secret weapon. Coincidence. That's right. Random chance. The aliens have a finite That's number of evolved ships across every time loop. If 10 go back and we destroy one, then they can only send 9 back in the next loop. So, all we have to do is time loop infinitely and eventually kill every single evolved ship, stopping them from going back in time and wiping our progress, and actually allowing us to gain the upper hand. To communicate this, EDF did the last thing I expected. 
So the aliens suck so much. Every time they go back in time, still they can't do enough of a job right. That we're still left around. And we're still systematically one by one destroying those ships. And aliens are not figuring that shit out. That, that is an insane level of thing. It got meta. To go back in time and kill the evolved ships, you have to physically go back for your mission select screen. These include the only mission that takes place at night. They can reuse their entire game three times, but darkness? Whoa, that's way too disruptive. We can only do that once. After that, you're finally ready to assault the ring. You gather the EDF's finest and attack. Then they all die and tell you to run away. Great work, guys. You shoot the ring and it goes horizontal, opening its portal to rain enemies. It's revealed that you're not just fighting one group of aliens from one point in the future. You're fighting all aliens from every point in the future. They're throwing everything they have at you, but nothing is more effective than the ring because it stuns a player in real life. Then the final boss. That thing is officially our enemy. Oh, it's officially of course, stamped everything and everything. EDF is big, but this thing is legitimately too big. It flies outside the skybox, attacks by turning an entire city block blue, and outruns all of your attacks. When you blow its head off, the front opens up and is revealed to be Mega God. What the fuck has happened? The time travel rules have either been making sense or the oxygen deprivation has finally gotten to me. Allow me to explain what's actually going on. We are currently in a time duel to determine who gets time paradoxed out of existence. Humanity or the aliens. The aliens cause the time paradox with that little ship crash and we cause the time paradox by launching a dirty bomb at Mars to prevent the cruel from evolving. Now time itself has chosen us as humanity's champion and Giga God as the aliens champion. Whoever loses this fight gets their entire species time paradoxed out of existence. I'll reiterate, time is a sapient entity which manually resolves paradoxes by handpicking contestants for a deathmatch. This is no- Yeah, this is Marvel shit. Basically that's how it is in Marvel, right? Like the control time and like pretty sure that's the same thing in DC as well when Flash fucks up with the timeline too much like what is it like time things come after him or something yeah so time is like seen as a sentient thing in many like our imaginations somehow right and this all comes from like Einstein in physics where time became a real like thing tangible thing right like we figure like how time works how time slows down and, like time is a thing people imagination go from there like oh time must be this time must be then People write down all this like fictional shit and there you go. No longer humanity versus aliens. This is four retards versus God's final form. <laughs> God. <laughs> of them gonna win. <laughs> of course. That's all. Remember, aliens, kind of fall you're no on match for the indomitable human spirit. I've met men who could goon for 36 hours straight. I've met stronger men who could flicker goon for 7 seconds. Humanity always has and always will overcome adversity. Because we have something you don't. Stupidity. And you get nothing. No ending. Goodbye. Thank you for the 60 bucks. Earth Defense Force 6 is a lobotomizing experience where every single design choice is intentionally wrong. I like how special effects makes you think the whole solar system gonna explode by the explosions of shit. That is one thing that's epic about this. Wrong. It's a sacrificial altar where you trade neurons for dopamine, coded by Emperor Hirohito himself. The weapon descriptions are lies. The dialogue is primordial brain rot. We can't. The enemies are right in front of us. I am the Manchurian candidate. My MK Ultra activation phrase could be any line of dialogue from this game. God, I hope it's not mating season. But I'm not complaining. <laughs> Coming from a race of people. Yeah, seriously, man. One thing I'm gonna I'm gonna say, like, I don't like games like this usually. Just like too many shit is happening. But something about this game is so good. Like even when I saw the like, EDF four four point one or something, right? That was the thing from like Badger one. That was epic. Five from Seth Zentek that I saw was epic. This is like epic. This type of game I can't imagine. But I can see myself playing basically. And I don't like games like this shit. Like a lot of things happening. Right, online game with a lot of like explosion shit is happening. But everything this game does, like, it captures epicness of, like, gigantic battles and shit. Missiles flying away, explosions, entire screen turning to white flashes because the explosion was so big. Cities getting destroyed, buildings crumbling out. This is insane. 
people with a history of being fried in DiGiorno Easy Bake Ovens. Parting with $60 was a difficult decision, but it was worth it. This is a series made by the same five guys for the past 20 years, and I'm cheering them on. Nonsense is an antidote in a world where nothing makes sense, and there's value in something that transcends reason. This is a product of unintelligent design, and I love it. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Yep, there you go. <laughs> this is such an unintelligent design. What if you, you want such as that, like a product of a mistake or unintelligent design or some shit, like happened by a mistake? And knowing how like matter, anti-matter, and how things like that work, all the matter that ex actually exists right now, that could be like random or some shit. That is, that's how it can point towards that. So it makes sense. There you go. Yeah. A Defense Force 6 review. Monoxide poisoning. Seth, Seth always has the greatest reviews there, out there, right? He just captures the essence of it. Alright, well, if you like, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.